Patrick O'Dooley, qualified. Patrick O'Dooley, select. Co-Dooley, experience. Patrick O'Dooley, results oriented. Qualified, select, experience, results oriented. Patrick O'Dooley. Companies nationwide have successfully motivated their staff in sales, customer service, management, and communications as Patrick O'Dooley speaks on becoming your personal best. We all have to be right up there and enthusiastic about everything we do. In fact, I even equate the word enthusiasm to a soft drink can that's been left open overnight. <laughs> Would you drink a soft drink that's been left open overnight? Say no. <laughs> Some of you are thinking here, I'm concerned about you. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't. Why not? Why not? It's flat. It's no, no fizz, no pizzazz at all. See, that's a person without enthusiasm. The minute you started your presentation, I knew I had made the right decision in selecting you as our guest speaker. Your message was very much on target and addressed the points we wanted to convey to the audience. You created a level of enthusiasm which allowed us to conclude the meeting on an upbeat, positive note. You say tremendous, it'll help you. So what you do is you do that. It's kind of like when I was a pilot. I was flying along and I'd fire off one of those heat-seeking missiles. It would take off towards the nearest heat. It didn't care if it was a good guy or a bad guy. It went to the nearest heat. Your subconscious doesn't care if you put in good stuff or bad stuff. If you say, man, it's exciting, I'm working on a great deal, interest rates are competitive, we're going to make something happen, you say, boy, it's tough. But it's a tough booger out there today. You know what I'm talking about. It will help you to become that way. So just say to me, and start right now. Don't, don't wait till tomorrow. I mean, when you go home tonight and your loved one say, hello, sweetheart, how was your day today? You go, tremendous. Where'd you go today? How come you're so tremendous today? <laughs> you weren't so tremendous when you left this morning. But I guarantee you, the more you do it, the more they'll like it, and they will become that way. People are hungry for that kind of uplifting. People buy from people. Congratulations on a tremendous presentation at our district sales manager's training conference. It was one of the best in delivery and content that I've witnessed in nearly 30 years. There are two primary criteria that was conducted by a group of national executive recruiters that went across the country looking at what two things will enable a middle manager to advance in their field. The two things that they came up with were, number one, the ability to communicate with your peers and subordinates, and also the ability to motivate not only yourself, but all those people who work with you on your team. Your energetic, entertaining delivery style, combined with your high content message, made a positive difference in our office. 
I particularly like the way you customize the program using our terminology. We were walking down the street, all of a sudden we looked up, and here came the mayor of Carmel. Who was the mayor? Clint Eastwood, exactly. Well, my wife looked up and saw him. <laughs> Jump it up and down. Well, I was real cool about the whole thing. I looked up and saw him and went. <laughs> and there was Clint Eastwood walking right up the street towards us, but my perception was different. I didn't see Clint Eastwood. You know who I saw? Dirty Harry, yeah. I saw Dirty Harry walking right up the street towards us, ready to stick his hand in that coat, pull out that cannon he calls a pistol, point it at us and say, Go ahead. You heard it too. A great line, literally. Go ahead, make my day. And I started thinking, that's exactly the same thing that I share with people, for you to make your day. You end our programs on just the right note. Our people leave with an enhanced energy level and the determination that they can make every day a good day. Qualified. Select. Experienced. Results oriented. Patrick O'Dooley. Hello, this is Patrick O'Dooley, and thank you for viewing my demonstration videotape. My philosophy about speaking is that audiences learn most when they're happy. So consequently, I believe in using a lot of humor and combine that with specific how-tos. I have a great combination that leave my audiences feeling good about themselves and what they do. And the way I accomplish that is with my pre-programmed questionnaire that I ask meeting planners to fill out on their needs and what their audiences want and their concerns are. So if you've seen enough of Patrick O'Dooley, that's great. If you'd like to see some more of Patrick O'Dooley live, stay tuned. I'm so lucky because I learned about the importance of attitude from a wonderful lady that right here in Dallas that I go to church with. And we were talking one day about doing some work together, and she said, now, now Patrick, what do you really do? I said, this is years ago, Nick. I said, well, I'm a sales trainer. I'll never forget her looking at me and said, no, 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 no. If you work with me, not for me, if you work with me, you'll be a sales educator. I remember looking at her and I said, well, gosh, what do you mean? Mary Kay <laughs> of Mary Kay Cosmetics, who does all right. And, you know, she makes a million dollars a month. <laughs> See, I listen to people like that. Yeah, she said, Patrick, people think I'm in the cosmetic business. I'm not. I'm in the people business. Just like everybody sitting in here, we're in the people business. And in the people business, you train animals and you educate people. And that's what this will be, an education process. And Mary Kay taught me so much about the value of attitude, just like you have right here. In fact, she's the one that taught me about the little bumblebee tie tack that I wear on my tie as a reminder to me of how important attitude is. Now, for people who don't know the story of the bumblebee, according to recognized aerodynamic facts, the bumblebee cannot fly. I don't know if you realize that. Aerodynamically, it can't fly because of the size and shape and weight of its body in proportion to its little bitty wings. But the bumblebee didn't get to go to a seminar. It goes ahead and flies anyway. See, that's what it takes, an attitude and skills. You've got to have the skills, you've got to have the attitude. And it goes hand in hand. And I, I'll show you how it works. Anybody here ever been to Lubbock, Texas? <laughs> All right, let me save the rest of your trip. <laughs> <laughs> no, Lubbock is a good city. <laughs> but I know now why Mac Davis wrote that song, you know, happiness is Lubbock in my rearview mirror. <laughs> I spent a week there one night. <laughs> I had one of those audiences, Paul, this is one of those audiences that eat their young. You know what I'm talking about. They were so tough, and I was so get, glad to get on that last flight, headed back towards Dallas, jumped on the airplane, this one flight attendant spotted my bumblebee. Well, I found out flight attendants can see this little bumblebee about 900 yards away. It has a few diamonds in it. <laughs> they can see that a long way. Well, she pulled me over to the other one and said, look what this guy's got on his tie. And the other one looked at it and said, oh, are you in the exterminating business? <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't as bad as coming back from New York a while back, jumped on one of these big wide-body airplanes, loaded down with seminar material, and I was the last one on the plane, 
running down the aisle, completely loaded, and on this particular flight were all female flight attendants. Well, here I came running down the aisle. The lead flight attendant saw me come and grabbed me by the tie, Judy. Didn't even ask me. Pulled me right over in front of all her peers, stood me there, and I used her words exactly. She said, girls, 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 look at this guy's fly. <laughs> so if you wear a bumblebee, you've got to be careful. But see, so much of life is exactly that way. It's how you look at it. But see, everybody in here can think of that individual you work with, you live with, you know very well. I don't care what kind of weather it is, they're going to gripe and moan and complain about it. Sure is windy, sure is cold, sure is hot, sure is humid. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about, don't you? Get a little job, you say, why do we have to do it? Why don't you do it back at headquarters in Fort Worth? I always pick it up down here in the field. <laughs> you know, people like that. And yet all of us can turn that 180 degrees away you can think of that individual you work with, you live with, you know very well. I don't care what kind of weather it is. It could be pouring down rain. They say, thank goodness for the moisture to fill up the water tables or bring us snow or whatever. They don't let weather dictate the kind of day they're going to have as if they could do anything about it, ladies and gentlemen. And they get a little job to do and say, well, it's, it's not really my job to do, but I'm going to do it better than it's ever been done before. Now then, thinking about those two individuals, an uptight sore head, griping, moaning, and complaining, and a happy, positive, enthusiastic person, which one would you rather be around, associate with, and have working on your team with you? This is an English-speaking group here. <laughs> which one? <laughs> yeah, a happy, enthusiastic one. You're exactly right, Nick. You get a bumblebee, too. Thank you very much. You get it right. Because everybody in here, exactly, that's not the hard question. See. It, happiness and enthusiasm are contagious just like the lack of it. And see, we all like to have happiness and enthusiasm around us because everybody in here can think of that individual that can literally light up a room by simply walking out. <laughs> exactly. And you can think of that individual that lights up a room when they come in. And I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, do you light up the room coming in or going out? <laughs> Hopefully it's coming in. And here I was. I went up there finally as, as a freshman, and I decided I'm going to go up to Oklahoma University and play football. When I played years ago as a freshman, you couldn't play on the varsity the way you can now. We had our own freshman team, commonly referred to back then as the Suicide Squad, <laughs> our live bait team, because all we were were literally live bait for the varsity, whoever they were playing the next week. So here we were. I was a freshman getting ready for Texas. Well, back then, Texas had an all-American split in named Cotton Spire. Many of you remember a great part of the Texas offense. I was a split in, so I had to play Cotton Spire, meaning I had to wear his number, wear his name, and I was running Cotton Spire routes for all this week getting ready for Texas. And I was getting killed. And I was so glad to see the last day in pads, and here came our quarterback, Bobby Warmack, brought out all those plays, all drawn out for us, laid that play down there, and I looked at that first play. I don't want to run that play because <laughs> it showed little on me blocking down on our All-American linebacker, Carl McAdams. But Warmack being the leader that he is, like you have to be a quarterback. We have to all kind of be quarterbacks of our own team. Say, now, come on, guys, we got to go out there and give him a good lick. It'll be on one. Ready? Break. Well, I went out there and lined up on my split end. He barked out those signals. He said, hut one. And I came out there like a ball of fire. Went right past the linebacker just like it was drawn. And he released me because he thought I was going out for a pass. Well, just as he released me, I made my turn, and here I came right down the line, faster, quicker, faster, quicker. I'm coming right at Carl McAdams, full speed. <laughs> he doesn't see me coming. <laughs> in other words, I was going to get a blindside hit on him. Well, I came in there and hit him, pow, pow, pow. <laughs> Usually I get applause when I do that. <laughs> I hit him just like that. We rode end over end over end. It's one of those magnificent hits you just dream about. Well, when you get a good hit, it's kind of like when you had that September month when it sold nearly 19 million. You feel so good, you kind of strut around. Well, I remember I picked myself up and I started strutting back that huddle and patting myself on the shoulder and said, oh, Patrick, you done good, sir. I like that. So I did. I looked back and I saw him coming. <laughs> 
But no, it wasn't Carl McAdams. It was our coach. Coach Mad Dog James, we called him. Because when Mad Dog got excited and mad, his mouth foamed up like a mad dog. <laughs> and don't you know some people are just like that today? And he was foaming at the mouth, mad. I couldn't believe it. He went running over to McAdams, who was still laying right on the ground, picked him up by the face mask, yanked him up in the air, and he said, What are you going to do, McAdams? Let some little freshman knock you on your can? What are you going to do in front of 30 million people? Now run it again. <laughs> <laughs> so you see there's going to be times in your life you got to do things you just don't want to do and I remembered years ago I walked in the uh, Dallas Cowboys the old Cowboys training room walked in there and there was a quote that said the quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence I went, wow that's good stuff it was unsigned, so I gave Tom Landry credit for it. <laughs> and I copied it down real quick. And here I was going all over the country telling people this wonderful quote. And someone came up and said, Patrick, that's not the entire quote. And that's not who said it. See, the entire quote goes like this. The quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence, no matter what their field of endeavor. Vince Lombardi the great Green Bay coach that took a group of losers, if you will, by practicing the skills, the basics, blocking and tackling, combining it with a winning attitude, made them into world champions and literally a dynasty of their time. In fact, another one of Vince's quotes that I love, he said, if you're not fired with enthusiasm, you'll be fired with enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is a test question. Good morning, Drew. How are you? Good, be seated. Now you all go out of here with that kind of feeling and determination. Not only have a good day, a good week, a good forever, you all do it because you made the choice. I'll leave a little saying goes like this. Good, better, best. May you never rest. Tell your good is better and your better is best. God bless you all. Make it a great year. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.